welcome back so in this video you're going to see how I make these two uh, lovely walnut tin bowls uh, now the interesting part of this is they came from the same board so the pit was running like so but I've decided to flip this one and uh, have the at the rim the hardwood and here is the sapwood at the rim um, these are for sale so if you want to buy them there is a mail in about me uh, tab here on a youtube channel uh, rough dimensions are uh, five inches by three and a half and uh, you can see the lovely shape and uh, these are quite thin so they're around one mil thick uh, thick here at the rim and it's slightly thicker at the bottom uh, and uh, this one is slightly oval or actually a little bit more as you can see uh, but this one is a little bit more squarish you can see how this end grain collapsed like so closed in um, only on this one there is uh, this uh, bark inclusion and uh, um, you'll see in the video i had a dilemma either to remove this completely but i've decided to keep them the sort of the same height and uh, I knew this will happen, but uh, there is no crack on the surrounding area of the wood, so I knew this will be okay. Uh, the only issue with these is I should have uh, just keep them in the house for a day or two and they will dry out. Uh, I used the microwave and here at a thicker uh, foot here you can see a tiny little checks and on, not so much on this one. Uh, but these are not structural, they won't um, like uh, pierce through or split the bowl. So you can use these uh, quite nicely for, uh, let's say, uh, dry stuff, walnuts uh, and uh, stuff like that. Or to keep it more of a decorative uh, pieces. And uh, you might think that because it's thin, it's um, like fragile, but these are quite stiff and... Uh, uh, quite uh, quite solid as uh, as they dry out they completely like uh, um, hardened and uh, uh, you've seen the intro of the video uh, of making the video making the bowls you see there is audio but for the rest of the video there won't be any audio uh, my phone uh, decided to cut the audio completely out uh, for some reason not sure why um, but it is what it is i'll do voiceover so i'll explain what i'm doing as i'm showing in the video but there won't be any uh audio original from the from the making of these and uh i just quite like these balls and um and the video is quite good so it would be too bad not to show it so are uh, blanks from uh, walnut and uh, what I'm going to do is make uh, thin one thin balls uh, but I'm going to reverse the orientation in the lock so here the hardwood is uh, or uh, will be at the bottom of the bowl and here will be at the rim so should be quite interesting uh... now as always uh, we start by scooping out the corner uh, because this is quite imbalanced a uh, piece of uh, timber as you can see the blank so this is now running at around seven eight hundred rpm and um, just trying to peel the this corner away and now i can uh, increase the speed even more so now it's running around uh, 1000 rpm and uh, now the cuts are much more um, let's say uh easier on the gouge and on yourself uh, so but you don't want to go crazy high speeds obviously you want to stay in a, your safe zone so you can see how the shavings now fly off faster and um, the cuts can be faster as well so at this stage uh all i'm doing is just um chew everything up and uh, you can see the grain now so this, this one is with the hardwood at the rim and uh, now start to shape the the foot 
Now this is the smaller blank of the two, so I always start with the smaller because I can't add more wood to match the bigger one. So this is now uh, almost at the end of the outside face, so I'm taking nice shear cut uh, or clean cut, push cut, whatever somebody likes, likes to call this. So I'm using just the right of the nose of the gouge on this asymmetric uh, gouge and just trying to make a nice clean outside curve. Here I'm using a uh, 10 mil spindle gouge uh, from record power um, just to shape the foot and get nice clean cuts. This is slightly against the grain cut, but um, you can do it because it's light and I'm using a really long bevel on the on the spindle gouge. And here obviously you want to scoop out the foot so it's easy, easier to flatten the, the bottom of it once the ball distorts and make some sort of a decoration. Here I just marked the, the split, tiny split that I found out and uh, once I remove the uh, once I, sorry, once I re uh, return it to and grab it by the foot, I'll remove that split. So this is the blank number two. Um, just same procedure. I'll uh, scoop out the corner so I can bring more speed in. And uh, that's the interesting part in the wood turning. If you're going to slow uh, speed, like rotation, then the gouges can be quite grabby and... Uh, uh, not so efficient, so obviously you don't want to wind uh, 3000 rpm uh, some ball blanks, but uh, the, the little bit more speed that you have, like for instance this uh, kind of balls I like to speed, I like to turn at uh, around uh, 1200 to 14, maybe 1500, that would be my max rpm for this kind of balls and um, here I'm just uh, chewing up the face and also uh, I know by the um, when the previous ball blank was uh, on it I remember that it was almost the shape of the size of the chuck uh, screw chuck the wooden block that you see uh, at the very uh, left corner of the top cor corner left um, in the screen so I use that kind of measurement as well in uh, duplicating the work. So you can use either the cone or, uh, you know, if you're turning between centers. So whatever helps you out to get the similar shape and the dimensions. So here I'm just marking slightly uh, for the height of the foot. So they are matched as well. And uh, now it's just a matter of bringing the curve from this point. Uh, on the rim and uh, the bottom of the of the foot so these are all now roughing cuts peeling cuts you can see by the shavings and this is now again a um, nice shear cut uh, but I'm having trouble here um, I'm fighting because the camera is in my way and I'm, I can't see what I'm doing quite well so I'm fighting it a bit and uh, here you'll see I'll have a little vibration here so uh, if you continue that will just get worse so you want to cut through that vibration so you go down where it's smooth you'll see here and just be neutral with the couch cut through that vibration and now you can continue on as nothing happened so that's at least my my approach to solving this. Now, <laughs> yeah, this is the part where I explain uh, for somebody like me that um, has uh, trouble with um, tannin in, tannin in the wood, so like oak uh, or this walnut, and that all mixes together nicely with the steel, and you get these stains on your hands. So. If you want to take it off, uh, I always like to use uh, lemons or uh, lemon acid, that powdery stuff. Uh, it's like a concentrate version of lemon uh, acid, let's say. 
and uh, that works extremely well it takes it off r immediately so that's a little trick i learned from a wood a woodworking masters that taught me trade so uh, here i just uh, was using scraper to get nice clean uh, cut and uh, you can see here this void this bark inclusion and uh, most of half of it will be gone here after this step once i get the height of the balls together so there are similar they don't have to be dead uh, similar but at least close so you can see here this is all peeling cuts so using the wing of the tool you're going into the spindle so you're facing the side grain so that's the easiest way to remove a bulk of the wood so drilling a depth hole now I'll do a video making this um, jig let's say so you'll see how that works And now just the matter of uh, hollowing out. So my approach on uh, hollowing tin bowls is in steps. So I like to go, let's say, one top third, then the middle third, then the bottom third. So I want to finish the top third and get it thin, and then I can continue on with the rest of the bowl. So here, these are all just roughing cuts. You can see you remove a lot of wood quickly just checking if the surface behind it is clean so i know i can go to the finish thickness wall thickness in wood turning it's quite important to be like deliberate with your movements you don't want to hesitate or nibbling away uh, here for instance i'm uh, contemplating with myself what I'm going to do with the rim and I, I decided just to go with a, a square rim just take off the corners and uh, you'll see here a little bit closer how I go about making thin bow so you see I'm taking almost quarters of an inch of a pass going down through the finish thickness which at this point is around mill and a half let's say and after sanding in the inside and the outside should end up around one mil or so that's the top thickness it goes slightly thicker as i go to the bottom it just feels better like, like that and it doesn't distort like uh, uh, crazy any shapes like uh, kidney shape or something like that the, the little bit more thickness at the bottom just gives a little bit more integrity let's say so this is the second part of the of the bowl the middle part and uh, here you have to uh, start to support your cut and I always uh, find my cut uh, going up to the finish part of the already that I've cut you can see here and that way you'll maintain nice flowing curve to the bottom and like I said you don't want to fidget with this too much you want to cut it and move on and get the best shape you can and uh, because if it starts to move on you it will be much harder to to cut it and now to just go to the to the bottom I'm trying to find the bottom of the hole and now just connect two points and uh, try to go as thin as you can and uh, like I said here it's maybe two two and a half mil maybe maybe going towards three mil at the very bottom so you see I don't support the cut here at the moment because I feel like there is no vibrations and I can be quite, let's say, aggressive. And once I feel there is vibrations coming through 
then I'll bring the hand behind the, the cut and uh, you'll see nice curly shavings and nice smooth curve and now as always use scraper uh, to just blend these two points and get nice flowing curve and um, important thing to know uh, when you have scrapers on a thin bowl like this you do not try to go to the rim flat scrape holding it flat like this on the tool rest uh, because you could induce a very major catch and you, you, you will blow out the ball so I'm just trying to keep it as minimum uh, like on the bottom of the ball only and maybe go a little bit to the side uh, but if I feel that the the wood has already started to move then I uh, either use shear scraping method or uh, just sand it after. Now sanding process for this kind of ball is um, first you use uh, used sandpaper and then you uh, just to get it surface dry so inside of the bowl that it's sh dry and uh, once you get the dust coming off then you can proceed with your next uh, grits and you see here I'm using uh, plastic so I don't uh, stain the foot and again here I'm matching the heights so here are all peeling cuts see nice big shavings that always uh, quite good indicator that uh, you're peeling the side grain and this is that void and uh, again this is the same process here I'm noticing that the the speed is a little bit down so I increase the speed and uh, continue on with the hollowing so as uh, previous I try to scoop out the middle and then go by the top uh, third of the ball so and here I'll just go sharpen the gouge because I haven't sharpened it actually from the job I did the other day so it's due to sharpening so and uh, here I'll, as you can see we'll go directly to the final thickness and you just check if everything is working okay here is that void that's to be expected that that it's split now i did use ca glue but it, it's way too thin of uh, wood there and just don't, doesn't want to hold and after drying in microwave it already broken apart so um, there is no point in trying to keep it steady so you can see here on since the ball is nicely cooperating uh, it doesn't move at all uh, to my surprise at the rim so I'm taking that to my advantage and uh, I did one last nice cut to finish the, the, the rim part of the inner ball and here I'm just bringing it down even more and uh, now here there is a little vibration so come through the nice finish part and try to blend the curves together I'm hoping this sounds okay in the edit and uh, for you this is the first time I'm doing a voiceover so I'm actually doing it in my shop and um, while in a, in a rest between the projects between the jobs so here I'm trying to find the bottom of the hole but it's the lamp is behind the phone and uh, it's sort of a dark inside so I don't quite have the decent view so I had to stop the lathe which uh, this lathe has a fast stop feature and a uh, fast start so fair, fast start and stop feature and uh, that works excellent and I actually keep it all the way uh, all the time on that uh, settings and uh, just makes a 
doing jobs like this much much faster so here I'm just trying to blend the curves and get the final thickness down below you'll see a little bit later uh, on the light how it's looking and now again scraper so this is the one with the hardwood on the foot which I actually much more prefer uh, but just wanted to change it up a bit and uh, make it a little bit more interesting so just as you can notice here I'm uh, pivoting the scraper from my thumb I'm not using my thumb on top of the scraper uh, I'm just manipulating with my thumb and my right hand the scraper to get the best possible curve so again sanding here that's the final grit I believe it's 400 grit and uh, you can see a nice surface and this is what it looked like after the inside is finished they are extremely close I'm quite pleased with that and the foot is quite close as well now this is um, one of the dry uh, cherry bowls I'm using it as a jam chuck now the real benefit of uh, gem chucks that I really like is first of all uh, as you see I don't use those uh, big uh, metal coal jaws or stuff like that um, I just like using uh, wooden gem chucks first of all on tin bowls like this uh, you get um, how should I explain this uh, the the bowl doesn't know that it's hollow uh, that's the term I'm using from uh, Stuart Barry actually um, so if you get the fit right um, you can actually get it thinner down uh, from the outside as well if you want to uh, because the bowl doesn't know it's hollow it's held firmly at the rim and uh, now obviously you can bring the tail stock if you, you don't have the finished foot uh, but in this case I have and uh, I just want to clean up the jaw marks here So I'm using the thumb as a, as would Richard said uh, fulcrum and I'm placing my hand over the bowl so in case That it does fly off, but I'm quite sure it won't but this way I'm just holding it steady just in case if something creeps out or So you can see nice clean cut. This is 10 mil spindle gouge with a long bevel it's around 30 degrees something like that so one more pass nice steady the uh, rpms are around 1000 rpm so not tremendously uh, high speed so the first cut was a little bit more of a angled in and uh, I just wanted a little bit more straighter foot, let's say. Not so much acute angle. And here I'll do a little cut against the grain, but since this gouge is nice and sharp and really long bevel, I can get away with it with a nice clean cut and help me get into the corner, as you can see. And uh, now this can be sanded on the outside. Um, it will be much faster. On the inside, it usually took around uh, five to seven minutes something like that first you have to dry the the surface but the, the outside here is already dry surface dry at least so it does take a little bit uh, less time and uh, this wasn't loose on the chuck like this I did uh, loosen it up first so this is the second one you can see how I, I tap it and I watch at the rim of the chuck and the ball where I can adjust or you can just spin it and adjust it like that and uh, this is the same procedure and I'm trying to get the foot on both of them to be similar diameter 
So a little bit, I believe, one more cut. Nice and easy, sharp gouge here is required. You don't want to uh, put too much pressure. And uh, again, going here against the grain, but light cut with a long bevel should get the job nicely done and right into the corner. And again, this is the final grit, I believe. You can see how this will look. And these are now sanded and ready for microwave. And uh, like I said, um, I should I should have left them in a day or two in the house, and that will prevent the, those tiny uh, checks at the bottom of the foot. But those are not major issue. They these uh, those are just more of a surface check uh, rather than any structural. So here you can see the light coming through the the bowl. You can see on the hardwood the uh, brown stuff. Uh, the light doesn't like to go through that and um, you can see on the bottom of the bowl here where the sapwood is the light coming through and uh, like I said on the rim it's thinner and at the bottom it's slightly thicker and uh, here you you'll see the light coming through but not on the bottom because there is hardwood there so you can see how that is quite uniform thickness and here are uh, finished bowls and uh, for the finish I actually use this uh, clamp hams uh, did I say that right? clamp hams, yeah uh, <laughs> beeswax salad bowl finish um, I was given this uh, not to do anything like uh, requested for a video or something like that um, just send it to me to try it out and if I like it to use it and it's a uh, good stuff it's um, I believe family owned business in uh, Canada and uh, they have their own, uh, own bees and everything and they do everything themselves and it's nice luster finish uh, nice quite uh, sheen to it so um, and then uh, you can see how the finished balls now look there is that uh, little crack and that won't go any further uh, because it's not uh, on the surrounding grain it's only on that uh, piece and you can see this ball is squarish in the shape and uh, I did not manipulate that in any means and this one is more of a ellipse shape and uh, on the beginning of the video uh, it's a little bit more because uh, this was filmed on the same night that I turned these and uh, on the beginning of the video it was day after and uh, you can see these are all now finished and uh, uh, once again uh, these are for sale and uh, if you like to buy them uh, just contact me via email and uh, we'll sort uh, the shipping and all of the details so uh, yeah once again thank you for watching and uh, hopefully I uh, at least somehow saved this video from going to recycle bin.